This is Professor of Medicine, Desiree DuBonnet, the man who left America to find freedom, who, well, no longer a man. Today's topic is going to be vitamin C, but we need to always remember negative entropy, the life force. A synthetic anything, that's not compatible with the human body. We call it synthetic. Now, when we looked at natural vitamin C crystallized, versus synthetic vitamin C, we start to see there's a big, big difference here. The physicist will tell you, you see, that the natural vitamin C plays with light because the electrons are at a high level, whereas the synthetic the electrons are at a low energetic level. So they absorb light, become black. You see, there's a great big difference. The chemist will say it's the same thing. Now, when we look at the chromatography, we're also going to see there's an awful lot of subtleties in natural vitamin C that aren't there in the synthetic ascorbic acid. We're going to see that there really is a difference in the natural versus the synthetic. It's called life force. It's called multiple ingredients. There's other things. It's not a reductionistic. It's a holistic extravaganza of life. Now, St. Georgie, good friend of mine. He won the Nobel Prize in 1937 for discovering vitamin C, and he said it's much more than ascorbic acid. He told them they were wrong. He laughed when he, when he talked to me about this. And he wrote a book, Bioenergetics, and in the Bioenergetics, it talked about the energy of life, that we needed to deal with the energy of life. If we don't talk about the energy, we're just talking about dead matter. No, we're living things. It's an energy of life. And he talked about how vitamin C was integral and it needed to be into a complex. There's many different things. And vitamin C was involved with every biological process. It helped energies to intercede and to interact. But he said it was much more than ascorbic acid. It was the hesperidin, the rutins, the flavonoids, many things that went into getting the vitamin C to really work. And to really get it to work well, you need to get a complexity. And here's one of the best formulas. It really has all different types of vitamin C that can get into a different act of the body at work. And he said the most profound thing was bone marrow. He laughed when he talked about his old country. He was Hungarian, he was from Budapest. And basically he talked about how you could get bone marrow soup and bone marrow. But I came over here and found out it was it's wonderful. But this stimulates the vitamin C to really work. And that bone marrow was one of the real elements that was able to heal Ebola. Viral conditions were now under the COVID threat. When you are very, very first exposed to a virus such as COVID, the bone marrow bone broth soup will stimulate the production of antibodies. Very, very important. You should not take this at the later stages. It's dangerous. You watch our videos and learn more about that. But as we start to get back to our vitamin C deficiency, we see that poor diet, smoking, alcohol, stress, antibiotics, pain medication, all these different things, carbon monoxide, mold toxicity, heavy metal toxicity, these cause vitamin C deficiency, not just from not eating it, but even eating it, you won't absorb it and can't use it. The vitamin C deficiency could cause anemia, bone problems, wound healing, uh, slow back, uh, factors, bleeding gums, loosened teeth, muscle degeneration, hysteria. Scurvy was the old idea, and vitamin C really was one of the first things that was found. And now if we look at the vitamin C deficiency, we're going to see that when you get bleeding at the gums, you get different joint pains. You get the inability of something to heal. You get you easily bruised. That's how St. Georgie found vitamin C, by the way. St. Georgie asked the question, why does the, the yellow pepper not bruise the same way the yellow apple does? And as he looked into it, he started to see that there was a vitamin C. And this was a living thing. And he started to understand that we needed to deal with the concepts of energy. And that's how he led to his discovery. But then they reduced it to sorbic acid and misunderstood everything. Dry skin, easily splitting hair, diarrhea, digestive disorders, nosebleeds, 
all signs of a vitamin C deficiency. Grumpiness, fatigue, inability to handle stress. But keep in mind that we need to listen to the words of Rabishi, the great who told us all about the law of dualism. The law of dualism states that the symptoms you get from a deficiency of a nutrient is the same type of symptoms you get from too much. You might be deficient in a nutrient, have the symptoms, then you start taking massive amount and the symptoms come back. Because too much or too little can create the symptoms. So we need to recognize the same thing with vitamin C. And then as we deal with vitamin C and the risk factors of the chronic use of the drugs and the aspirin, the oral conceptives, contraceptives, etc. These things create risks, some cigarette smoking especially. But we need to be able to recognize that vitamin C is involved with almost every disease. So vitamin C now has really become a panacea. It's useful to get to people. However, the daily recommended dose is about 100 milligrams a day. You can get it very easily from foods. Food is your best medicine, and food is your best source of vitamin C. And taking massive doses of vitamin C, your body just gets used to it. See, it's a water-soluble vitamin. So vitamin C, in order for it to do the amazing things with your immune system, needs to be taken in excess when needed, not as a panacea. So you get it from foods, and then you're going to be able to use the vitamin pills later. If you get bell peppers, you get these different nutrient-rich foods into your body, you're going to get all the vitamin C you need. Then you can take more, and when you take more, you're going to need to make sure you're taking a natural, a well-blended natural, with the entire vitamin C complex into it. Then you can start taking larger and larger doses. The larger and larger doses of vitamin C will help you when needed it's not really a preventative. It's much more of a treatment when needed. And always remember, a synthetic anything is an insult to the body, even a synthetic vitamin C. Try to use natural.